And with that, we should be live. Welcome everybody. The plan today is to talk about dash panels. We're really excited about this one. This is a uh, category or a product line for us that's really taken off over the last probably four or five years. It was really when the uh, electronics companies introduced the uh, recessed, you know, the flush mount electronics that there was a lot of demand for this. Um, and, and we really invested in kind of figuring it out. And then recently here, over the last two or three years, on the aftermarket side, a lot of boat owners have been redoing their dash. Uh, and so we, we're doing probably in the area of seven or eight active projects at any given time for this. Yep. Um, so let's talk first, uh, Jared, about why someone would want to replace their dash panel. Like, what, what are some of the requirements that lead someone to that? Sure. So, you know, number one would be if they have an issue where the area, uh, they need to update any switch panels, uh, their electronics. Um, that's going to be the, the main reason why they'll want to update and add this in. It just gets them kind of back to a flush area. You know, if they've got a cutout that's six inches and they want to upgrade to a 12 inch screen, they can open that up. But if it's that they want to relocate something and still have that same size screen, now that whole cutout is existing into the fiberglass of their console. So they need to find a way to, to kind of get back to a blank canvas to move electronics or switch panels back around. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we see a lot of pictures every day where someone pulls out a lot of old electronics and the dash looks like Swiss cheese, right? right. And it's like, okay, yep. well, what am I supposed to do with this? Sure. You know, um, so that's the main, you know, kind of issue. So let's talk about what the options are and what the first steps are. So someone comes to us and they do what? What do we generally need? Yeah, so generally we need a template. Uh, we've actually got a really good example of one that we're working back here. Um, either a template or a drawing, right? So we can do either. And really we want to know, you know what the dimensions are of the actual dash. So you can see here, this is an actual dash uh, that they provided the cutouts. You can see a couple different gauges down here, rocker switches that are in there. So that's a really good example of you know what, what the best case scenario is. Uh, that works for us. And the, I would say that was on the that is on the extreme, extreme absolute side. I mean yeah. we see you know, a lot of times, because you know, these projects can get a little bit spendy because there is um, you know, a fair amount of engineering time in, in really getting it right, and it's expensive material. A lot of times we recommend um, you're getting a quote first, yep. where someone will start with literally a napkin sketch. It's like, yep. hey, it's 28 by 12 about, and I want four or five holes here, exactly. you know, or 15 across the bottom. So we're able to take the, the cost of the material, and then based off the number of cutouts, kind of give them an estimate from a, here's what it would cost engineering time, and then additionally, here's what it would be material cost, and give them a ballpark, right? It's gonna be no more than this and no less than this, so that you can make a decision of whether or not you wanna move forward with that. Absolutely, yeah, I always prefer to, to quote before getting something. Like, I mean, you can see, mail. and you could see that there was some time Absolutely. put into that. Um, plenty of times, it's it even once we get through the quoting process, it still will only be a, hey, I want this specific unit. I want two of them. I want them you know, centered on either side, and I want four two-inch holes across the bottom, equal spaced type thing. Like it's so, so that's one thing. I, I th there's definitely some work from the customer's perspective um, right. in getting the outside shape of your dash. Sure. But a lot of times we are able to provide some help yeah, with I mean, the we, interior. We do it for the OEMs every single day. So you know, from Absolutely. a design standpoint, we've got you know, 15, 20 engineers sitting on the other side of this wall that are able to, to give that advice, that do it you know, stylistically, aesthetically pleasing for the OEMs. Sure. And we can say, look, you've got the switches, you have this uh, autopilot here, and you want two, uh, two, two navigation units put in. And we're able to say, well, it's gonna be best if you move this over two inches. So giving us the models and what cutouts you want, we're able to either do research or have research already done on the size of the cutouts that need to be appropriate and space them out to give you the best idea. And again, before we do anything, we're sending a drawing to the customer. Absolutely. Right? We're going to look at some of those drawings a little bit later here yeah. and show you just all the different configurations, dash configurations we've done and, and can do. Um, yeah, you always get a drawing to approve before we cut anything. Yep. Um, cool. So do you want to show them some pictures of some dashes that we've done? Yeah, Let's I switch think, back I over think we'll here start there. and check that out. Let's see. We've collected some. So the first thing I want to look at is 
some acrylic dash uh, dash panels. And acrylic is the most popular color. We're going to talk a little more later about uh, material options, but sure. the most popular one's acrylic, so we'll look at that first. And black acrylic specifically for color, right? And that's generally because you're matching the uh, screen color, right? It, right. It does look sweet. Yeah. It looks like that, like, cockpit, like, <laughs> zoom, like, you know, iPad, you know, I don't know. It's kind of cool. So, you know, here's an example. This is a, a very typical, simple one in many ways. Yep. Um, more complicated in others, like for example, you can see there's no mounting holes for this right. one. Um, and I'm not sure if we have a picture of this one specifically. Well, let's switch. So this one doesn't have mounting holes. And say for example, like this one does, right? So we've got some you know, so there's a difference face mounting. face mounting and stud mounting, right? Um, which we'll get into more. Sure. Um, but we've got all different you know, shape sizes. These are all from customers who have sent in stuff. This is kind of an interesting one where you can see this is like actually a hinged door. With a gas shock underneath it to help yeah, lift that, it up, right? it opens up. That's really slick. Um, and then, is this the same one? I no, think this similar. is a different, similar. So again, these are these are guys that want to put in you know larger units that are available nowadays. You see, in, in both cases, one had the autopilot to the right. This one's uh, in the middle. But you know, really, you don't you don't have any other option but to get back to scratch. And you know, prior, a lot of guys would buy some cut to size starboard or a stock size of starboard and cut it in there and then just mount them. You can see this is a a much more aesthetically pleasing option. Uh, one of the guys we actually worked with said that it completely changed his boat, right? So it's something that he feels like he's on a new boat now because of this, this simple change. Well, it, and it's totally self-serving. I'm acknowledging that. But I absolutely agree. When I walk around the, the boat show, I remember, um, I think it was in Lauderdale this year. Yeah. I feel like the boats, the, even the new boats, yep. that don't have the black acrylic you know, dash surrounds and panels, they look like they're missing something. Yeah, I remember, They look naked. It does not look as high-end as those My look first now. week starting here, we were at Ibex together and walked around and looked at a couple different boats, and that was one of the things that you mentioned, like, hey, look, this is this is something when you see it one time and then you see it without it, it you it obviously cool. see something's yeah. missing. So let's switch and let's look at some before and after versions of this. Let's come back to before and after. Let's talk a little bit about kind of the process and, and what... Um, I think a lot of you probably have on your dash and you know where we could go with it. So let's just go through. We've got uh, f five or six different customers here. Um, so start to the far right on this one. I think that's kind of the first picture. This one, you can see kind of where the customer has, hey, these are my new units or older units and this is what I've been living with. This is what I, I need to, to be in here. And you can see this is not a good alternative, right? So at that point, to purchase the product from us and with any of the stud mounting, which we'll, we'll show you some more details later what that is, solutions, we provide what's a, a drill template. So it you know, really makes it easy for you to use that drill template as a template both to you know, mark and cut out. You don't want to remove too much of the fiberglass, only the areas that are open to have that full support. But you can use this drill template to you know, make sure your cutouts fit right. You can see where there's a little bit of fiberglass once he's got it clamped there towards the middle divider as well as over to where the autopilot would go. Um, but also useful for drilling in the area where you're going to use your, your, your hidden studs to fasten the, the dash panel into the console. So then it looks like here is our, well here is the after with the covers on, but here is the after. Yep, and I think the one in the middle is similar. It's just the after, or pardon me, the before without the covers. Right, this is the before without the covers. So here's before and after. And after. Cool. Let's check out another one here. Let's check out number four. I think this is a really cool one. So here is the dash after he took out all of his old electronics. You can see that looks like he's got like a, a nine, eight, nine inch screen there uh, and, and two gauges in the middle and wanted to move to, probably one was an autopilot, one was for a radio, wanted to move to a, a different style. And we can walk through the photos and see the process if you want to walk them through it, Andrew. Absolutely. So you have similar deal here where this customer wanted to do hidden stud mounting, which is a really attractive uh, way to do it. It does add a little bit of cost because you do have to have that template, right? So, and again, we're going to show with a, an example we have behind us, but you know, there's press-in threaded inserts on the back of the acrylic. And in that, we thread in some, some studs, right? 
you have to have holes for these studs to drop through, which is why you need the drill template to locate those studs. Then you drop your whole panel on and you have to have access from the back to use a nut to tighten down those studs. So same deal here where this customer took this template and used it to trim out um, you know, the open area. And, and step one, actually, if you if you oh, bounce sure. down in the middle, so we talked about providing like a, a template, right, which is ideal if what we showed behind you. But here's a drawing. You know, this customer, he's local here in Central Florida. He was able to just basically say, okay, look, here's my dimensions, right? It's on a, a piece of printer paper. He's giving us dimensions, giving us relative relevant space uh, where he wants things mounted in the dash panel. Has provided some radiuses for us as well. Um, so yeah, that's a, a really good example that we got that we're able to start giving at least a quote to begin that engineering. Yeah, and we can start the conversation from there always. You know, I mean, we we might look at it and go, hey, we need this little piece of information. We or or maybe it's just completely not going to work. But you know, don't feel like you have to go all the way to to this thing, which is awesome if you do, but but not required. <laughs> um, so then, like we're so saying here, here's your template for drilling out all your holes and trimming your uh, fiberglass. And just repeating again what, what Jared said, our preference when you're mounting these is to leave as much of your original fiberglass as possible. Acrylic, awesome stuff, super good looking, you know, high gloss matches your uh, you know, electronics, but it's um, not, I mean, it can break, right? I mean, it's not something that you want to hang all of your electronics from completely unsupported. Right. So only, you know, say maybe you need to open this up a little bit here. Don't take the whole thing out. We do not recommend cutting a gigantic hole and setting acrylic over it and hanging all your electronics from it. Only cut out what you need and your template shows you that. If you don't use a template, you can still do the same thing with the actual acrylic. Set the acrylic on, use a pen or a, a marker, mark where you need to open up your cutout a little bit, you know, and only take out what you need to. And then this part, this uh, dash just turned out awesome. It looks great. That I think that was on a so cape, a cape horn here. Is it? Yep. Yeah. That's just beautiful. On the other before and afters, were there any other ones that you specifically wanted to show? Is that Five is very five similar. Is yeah, I mean, same kind of deal. I think we walked through that one as well. You can see where the autopilot ended up in the middle. Again, blank dash. Uh, got the template. That's the finished product. Looking really sharp. Uh, had a combination of different units there. And again, we're, we're working with so many OEMs on these that you know we, we try to make the process as easy as possible. We'll either find the, the engineering docs or specs uh, for for the cutouts of the units, or we already have those on hand already. Absolutely. So this is a similar deal. Looks like he had already tried once to uh, to do it in starboard, and then went back and did it here in acrylic. Awesome. Looks great. Well, let's check three since we're since we're right here. So this one's really great. You can see that this is you know, an old uh, ABS dash panel. I think that's actually aluminum, like, uh, like aluminum? Sheet, aluminum sheet metal. Yeah, this is uh, actually uh, the husband of a, of a lady that manages our shipping department, Raffaele, he's a great customer of ours, um, has an older tiara and was looking to replace, and I, I believe that that is just powder coated aluminum that's chipped off and corroded over the years, that, you know, if you go to the next one, you'll see where he's rearranged the gauges uh, and, and worked with us, that is a good example of a face mounting style, right? So there's no hidden studs there, but he had the acrylic cut to size with us to, to cut out the hole panels or the holes for his gauges. Looks like he has upgraded the gauges as well, but looks, again, really, really sharp. Awesome. So um, we talked a little bit about stud mounting and face mounting. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, let's switch back to us here. I want to talk a little bit about what we call dash panels and dash overlays. So for the you know, aftermarket, for Boat Outfitters customers, the most common thing that we are building are dash, what we call dash panels. And we, when we say a dash panel, what we mean is you're mounting acrylic or starboard or some material onto your dash and you are mounting your electronics to that acrylic panel. It's, it's hanging from that acrylic panel. You might want to support it from the back if it's particularly heavy, but it is mounted into that acrylic panel. Um, and that is probably 95, maybe maybe even so higher than that. So it'll sit proud a little bit, right? It will Most sit of proud. the bezels of the different displays will sit proud. The gauges will sit proud. It's not exactly flush, but again, the way that they're building them nowadays, it's, you see it's very, very minimal. Uh, yeah, on that one there, if you scroll in, you can see 
that you know just sits up just a little bit in the bezel but it is it is resting like you said on the top of the acrylic and is being supported by that acrylic dash panel correct so that is what we call a dash panel and that is again 99 maybe maybe 95 99 percent of what we do for boat owners um, for boat builders we do something a little bit different we do what we call uh, dash overlays and dash overlays are specifically designed for use with these uh, you know, flush mounted electronics that kind of came became popular here five years or so ago and with dash overlays what you're doing is you're mounting your electronics into the, the base fiberglass uh, dash and then we are supplying you with an acrylic overlay that caps over that and trims that out. And you're and taking I, the bezel off the unit in most cases. You're not mounting the bezel. Exactly. Correct. So let's grab, I have an example of that here. Yeah. I'll hand that to you. All right, let's check it out. So this is what we call a dash overlay. And what you'll see, Jared, you can lift the whole thing off. It's yep. on studs. And I understand that in this case, this is acrylic, but we're pretending that this is your fiberglass dash. We'll scoot it over a little bit. So you could see that this, these electronics are mounted directly in the dash. And then we have this overlay panel, which if you turn around, you can see is actually milled and pocketed to capture the uh, kind of the, the bezels, edge, the, the bezel, face. the face of your electronics. And again, this is your studs. This is a good example of your studs. See if I can't get them a little bit closer so people can see that they're kind of threaded inserts here um, where you can take this this long shank of a, a, a bolt and the insert just kind of drops in. And likewise, once you get it in and you've dropped it through your panel, you would secure that with a nut with on the nut. back. And and I think that brings up a really good point. Uh, you want to talk through you know, absolutely. what is necessary to have something like this if it's a stud mill. So in, we're jumping around a, a little bit, but that's just, just a, there's a lot to consider and, and, and think about. So when you're doing a stud mount, whether you're doing a dash overlay or a dash panel, you need to make sure that you're going to be able to get access to your uh, studs. And I know typically you have rear access in that area because you need to be able to service your electronics. So normally that's not a major problem, except for particularly when you get up into corners a lot of times. So again, pretend that this is all fiberglass. Up in the corner, a lot of times boat builders, when they're spraying fiberglass, will get a little bit heavy. They'll spray a lot in the corners and that corner will get quite thick. And if you have a stud that's right on the corner, you can find that you, you, you go to drill your holes, you set your stud in, and you just don't have any access to that. You cannot get a nut on it. And that's been an issue uh, with a couple of uh, boat outfitters customers we've worked with, but it is always something that we talk to the boat builders about when we're designing dash panels. So you need to keep an eye on that. And uh, one of the fixes for that is maybe we can help relocate the studs a little bit, avoid the corners when we place those studs. Um, but outside of that, your only really option, if it's already, you know, the fiberglass is already thick there, is kind of chisel that out. Grind it out. Yeah, grind yeah. it out. Um, but that is definitely something to think about. Now, going back to overlays versus dash panels, I want to clarify what we are able to do for customers. <clears throat> sure. And for Boat Outfitters customers, and when I say Boat Outfitters customers, I mean just individual boat owners who are looking to upgrade their personal boat. We are not able to do uh, dash overlays unless you have it refiberglassed so that you're coming back at it from a point of scratch. Yep. Um, so that might be, hey, I just bought a new boat and the dealer didn't do any electronics by request. Can you work with me? Let's do a acrylic overlay. Which is a very small percentage of a, a pretty small percentage. Right. Or if it's, hey, I'm looking to update my boat. I've got a good fiberglass guy. I'm gonna have someone redo the dash so that we're coming at it from scratch. It's really uh, borderline impossible to work through all the different variables of, hey, my dash is Swiss cheese, but I wanna mount something to it, and then I want you to build this perfect overlay. I mean, you can see there's effectively no gap. I mean, it fits perfectly, and you don't want a gap. If there's any gap at all, you know, it looks very odd, right? So it's a critical tolerance. Um, so we only are able to do acrylic overlays if you're able to get your dash back to you know, a, a, a open canvas. Uh, if not, we can do what we call dash panels, which again is just, hey, I'm mounting this to the, the panel, not right. to the fiberglass. And you're really talking about the difference between, with this overlay, you can see as my finger kind of rubs across that surface, it's completely flush. 
to where the the sacrifice you're making is the amount that we've we've uh, you know grew, uh, tooled into the back of this acrylic here. That's really all you're going to sit up. So it's going to sit proud a quarter of an inch on most units. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And you saw the the image that's up on the screen over here. Um, if you know, if you want to share that again, you can see it's a a, a 100% a comparable option. Yeah, I mean, it looks better, marginally better. Yep. I mean, if I'm a boat builder, and I, of course, every time I build a boat, I have a, a new, clean, uncut dash, and I can put up a template, I can cut it out, and I can do these overlays. I mean, it makes sense right. for boat builders to do it. Yep. It almost never makes sense for a boat owner who's retrofitting their boat to go through that expense yep. um, and do that. So with that in mind, let's take this out of here yep. and I'll show you kind of the deliverable on what most people expect to see. Let me grab that one behind that. Sure. So this is a customer. You want to kind of walk through what you got? Yeah, so again, this started with the sketch back here, right? We started here, we talked about the drawing or the template that we get from the customer. And you know, once we got that down, you know, the next step would be to, for us to send a drawing to him. So they send us a drawing with all the dimensions, cutouts, and then at that point we actually get a drawing. So if you want to switch over here, Andrew, we'll walk through a couple different drawings, what customers can expect um, when we actually get that drawing back. So this is the drawing of the one that we're looking at, right? So we took uh, this that the customer sent in, Yep. Right. We reviewed it. I'm sure we had questions. Generally, there's a fair amount of back and forth in doing this uh, correctly. Uh, and we delivered this to the customer to be able to measure, verify that everything looks how it's supposed to um, and, and that we're good to go. It's actually fortunate in this case, there's a little bit of a unique thing and we'll show it to you actually on the unit, but I'll show, call it out here in the, in the drawing as well, right in the center between the two main uh, units there were some switches that were being added. And those some rocker switches. Yeah. Some rocker switches. Some rocker switches that did not, uh, would not fit, would not install in a material thickness of a half inch. Ah. So if you look on the back, yep. we actually mill this out so that this area specifically, let's switch back and look, so that this area specifically is milled out so that he's going to be able to install his rocker switches in that area. So that's from the back side. Let me flip it back around to the front. From the front, no one's any the wiser, right? And it looks like this is going to be a stud mounted unit. So that's why they've included the drill template here. Yep. You can see the drill template. Again, looks like it's going to be you know, two displays here, um, an iPilot or a, yeah, autopilot here in the middle, and then you've got your rocker switches and all of your gauges down below. So we'll send, you know, once you approve the drawing, we will cut two things. We'll cut the drill template for you if it's stud mount. If it's stud mount. And then send you out your part. Um, kind of get you on your way. Awesome. So one of the last things, well I, before we do that, let's switch back over and let's just flip through some of the different drawings so you can see the variety. And this is this is just you know five minutes here before the video searching our project management system for dash panels for things that we've done over the last uh, you know maybe couple months. Um, and you can see we've got all different kinds of dash panels. Some yep. that are very simple, some that are quite complicated. We do depend on uh, our customers, of course, when we send these drawings, we're doing it to help protect them and, and protect ourselves, making sure we understood all your requirements correctly. So we ask you that you, we ask that you really go back and check these drawings and make sure that, you know, that they match. We've even got, in this case, somebody just wanted to get back to a flat surface with starboard. They just mounted starboard there. So you get all different kinds of uh, parts that we've done. Do you want to talk about the last thing, which is kind of material considerations? Absolutely. So let's look at, <coughs> instead of, well, let's switch back here. I have some samples. And most people, hopefully, are familiar with King Starboard versus Acrylic. And we could do a whole show, a longer show than this, where we talk about the pros and cons of each. But in the context of this dash panel, the big thing to know is that starboard is uh, a matte finish with some texture to it. Like an eggshell. Yeah, think uh, think your cutting board, right? Yep. Whereas acrylic is a high gloss. Um, I mean, acrylic is, plexiglass is a brand name of acrylic. So right. it's, it's, but this is, okay, of course, opaque. Um, so it's a black, glossy finish. So most people would, 
uh, argue, and I would probably agree with that, that this is a higher end look. Absolutely. In so much that it matches your electronics, it looks you you get that effect of oh wow this is one gigantic you know cockpit panel right uh, where you don't with the starboard and the cost is appropriate to that right I mean the cost the cost is quite a bit higher for this sure. I mean considerably higher I was actually working on pricing recently and didn't realize just how dramatic. Uh, more expensive acrylic is than starboard. It also has to be polished. This high polished edge, that is done by hand. This edge is right off of our CNC router. So you have you know, a much higher end glossy look yep. that's a fair amount more expensive, or you have a matte finished look that is equally functional. In fact, if, if anything, it potentially is more durable, right. um, but uh, you know, not quite as kind of sexy looking. Sure. Yeah. Um, so you want to show, let's show some pictures of uh, starboard panels. Yeah. Let's switch over here. So again, same thing, right? You've got people that want to switch out gauges or electronics. They need to get their dash back to scratch. So they're, they're buying this material from us or, you know, in the, the, the same sense, you know, this, this guy just wanted to add it. Looks like the electronics are the same. He's got a VHF in the, the first image. Go back to the second one. He has. He's changed out. It looks like there was an autopilot there. He's changed his radio over, given him a little bit more room, and it looks like possibly has repowered. It looks like maybe the same Yamaha gauges. Um, but again, you can see where you know option one versus option two. It just looks more finished. So and it doesn't look bad. I mean, we sell a lot of King Starboard dash panels. Actually, this is a good one to show the before and after. This one, it looks like they did repower, bought all new switches. Um, Where's right before. Th if you go. I think it's actually in the before and after, possibly. Yeah, I think we went through those. Okay. Um, showed this one here. Yep. Just a cover plate, a starboard cover plate for, for hanging uh, that Garmin there. Yep. Let's see if there's any other ones. Do, do, do. And here's kind of a neat one. Want to talk about this one? Yeah, so this guy looks like he's, you know, completely redone the dash. This is similar to the boat that I bought, um, you know, basically had to rebuild everything back on the console at the top and the front out of starboard to remount everything. Um, all the gauges, everything had to be remounted as part of like a little switch panel with toggle switches. Uh, so you can see that's a an inexpensive but a good alternative to, you know, this boat looks great. It's ready to get back out on the water. You know, and in this case, if the customer is comfortable with, with doing a couple or a little bit of cutting in himself by himself, you know, he might have drilled, uh, you know, one, two, three holes and that project right there might be $35, $40. $40. Uh, you know, maybe for maybe per piece. Right. Yeah, so call it under 100 bucks, right, to do that. Versus a dash panel, don't hold me to it, but I mean, I think they're in the, you know, I don't think you're getting out of there for less than 350 and yep. they probably go up to seven, seven hundred, you know, thousand dollars depending on just how complex it is, just how large it is. Because of the engineering time, right? Yeah, I mean, the material cost, of course, that's what Andrew is basically saying is by buying this material, it's less expensive than acrylic. And in this case, you know, if, if he didn't have any engineering done, would just bought the raw material and was able to cut and fabricate something out, which Starboard's fairly easy to do, it right? Is. Absolutely. And you know, here's another one. Yeah, this, uh, this all looks good. Awesome. Um, I can't think of anything else that I want to talk about. I, you know, like I said at the beginning, we're doing, you know, half a dozen or so of these at any given time. You yep. know, uh, um, so we would love to work with you on it. There's a, Maybe hopefully this gave you time, right? Turn I mean, it, yeah. let's talk about that. That's something where. I know that we've been, we're here in Florida, so, you know, lobster season's the season everybody wants something, they've got to get everything done for their boat. Yep. Uh, I think it's important to talk about turnaround time for something like this. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, a lot of it is, the, the gating thing is really the engineering time, you know, and one of the challenges we have is that our engineering time fluctuates a little bit throughout the year, and even kind of on a weekly, week by week basis, you know, we're doing so many new parts for the boat builders that, uh, you know, you might get lucky and it might be a slightly slower week, and you might get less lucky where, you if someone comes back from a boat builder with 40 new parts to prototype and they kind of you know bind up the engineering department a little bit that said you know i think uh two to three weeks is probably a a fair estimate now one of the things that can really slow it down is uh Revisions. Yeah, revisions and communication on the customer's end, right? Sure. Um, you know, if we send that drawing and it's Tuesday and he's going to have to get out to the boat next this weekend, yep. right? And, and then maybe there's a revision and then maybe we do that again. You know, you, it's not uncommon for these to, 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 to drag out. Yeah. Um, 
sometimes it's could be our fault but oftentimes it's uh, you know just inconvenient to, to get out there and measure but you know if we really get good communication and uh, expectations are uh, you know, expectations and on, are shared on both sides and, yep. and properly communicated. I think two to three weeks is a reasonable expectation. Um, yeah. Anything else you can think of? No, I think that's that's perfect. I think we've really covered everything for this topic. Awesome. So, guys, we really want to know if you're enjoying this. You know, we've done uh, four of these episodes now. Um, you know, and and there's not a lot of people out there that are you know, building you know, content for how to fix up your boat and how to work on your boat. And we are really trying to bring value here. Obviously that there's a sales element to this and that we would love to sell you parts, but we also really want to bring value to you know, the industry to, to know their options and the things to think about. And that's why we show you, hey, here's how you can do it on the super high end. Here's how you can do it on the low end. You know, we want you to know your options because oftentimes there's nothing worse than going, what the heck can I even do? My dash looks like this or my rod box looks like this. Right. Um, so, so let us know in the comments what you think. Let us know if there's any other topics that you think would be helpful. If you do feel like this is helpful, hopefully you subscribe. You know, we're, we're doing this every Thursday or around noon, so join us. We'd love to have live comments. But let us know if this is valuable to you uh, so that we can continue to do it and make sure that we're talking about things that are relevant to you. So with that, thank you very much for your time.